factor in that grouping. Here are the things to look for. You want to look for four terms. We haven't factored anything with four terms yet. We factored three terms and we factored two terms. We have not factored four terms yet. Uh, so you're looking for a four-term polynomial with a highest exponent of three. Technically, it could be more, but the ones that we're going to deal with are going to be uh, 33. You want to set up your parentheses like this. You're going to have a GCF in front of a set of parentheses plus a GCF in front of another set of parentheses. You're going to find the GCF of the first two terms. This is why it's grouping. You group the first two terms together, you group the second two terms together. You find the GCF of those two groups individually. It's not going to be the same thing. Okay, you're going to have different GCFs uh, for the first pair and versus the second pair. You're going to factor those out and then put what's left inside the parentheses. Here's the kicker. You should have the exact same expression inside of the parentheses. This and this should be the exact same expression. If it's not, then either your GCF isn't correct, you didn't factor up the GCF correctly, or you can't factor it by grouping. Okay? So then, after that, you're going to put the two GCFs together in a set of parentheses, so we're rearranging this expression. We put those together in a set of parentheses, and then our common factor goes in the second set of parentheses. And then you can always multiply it out, foil, box, whatever method you use to check. All right, so let's see how this goes. Example A, 15x cubed plus 18x squared plus 20x plus 24. Like always, we do want to check and see if the entire expression has a GCF. It doesn't, okay? Uh, three out of our four terms are even, but that first one is not even. 15 and 18 are divisible by 3, but 20 is not. So we don't have a, an overall GCF. We've got four terms. It is degree 3, so let's group them. Okay, we're going to pair these two terms together, and we're going to pair these two terms together. So let's look at the first pair. 15x cubed plus 18x squared. What do 15 and 18 have in common? 3. Okay. X cubed and X squared. What do they have in common? X squared. Okay. You want to take out the, 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 the biggest exponent that you can, but it's always going to be the smaller one. Okay. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and factor out that GCF out of that first pair. 15 divided by 3 is 5. X cubed, if we take out X squared, we have 1X left. Plus 18 divided by 3 is 6, and x squared, we took out the x squared, so it's just 6. Okay, plus, what's our GCF between 20 and 24? 4. Okay, they're both even, so they're divisible by 2, but if you can take out more than that, you can take out 4. Now, only the 20 has an x, so this one doesn't have a variable as a part of its GCF. Okay, so when we take 4 out of 20x, we get 5x. When we take 4 out of 24, we get 6. Notice, these linear factors right here, that's what that's called, a linear factor, are the exact same. They have to be the exact same for this to work. So then, for our final answer, we Put our GCFs together in a set of parentheses, 3x squared plus 4, and then we list the common linear factor once. This is what most people struggle with. You only list it once because they have it in common. You don't list it twice, <clears throat> even though it shows up twice in the problem before that. The reason why this works, and some people have a, have a problem with seeing this, when we're looking at this line right here, when we took out the GCF, these, this is a term in the middle, plus this is a term. What do they have in common? Now they have 5x plus 6 in common. So really it's like we're taking that out as a GCF. We're taking this linear factor out as a GCF. What are we left with? The GX squared and the plus 4. That's why they go in set of parentheses and we only list the 5x plus 6 uh, once. And again, we can check 
it really quick. We can FOIL it. <coughs> Bless you. 3x squared times 5x, 3 times 5 is 15, x squared times x is x cubed. The outside, 3 times 6 is 18, uh, <coughs> x squared. The inside, 4 times 5 is 20, and that one has an x. And the last, 4 times 6 is 24. That's our original problem, so we're good. This is our answer right there. Okay? <coughs> Let's look at B. Okay, 56 n cubed plus 24 n squared minus 35 n minus 15. Okay, it does not have an overall GCF. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and pair them up. So 56 and 24. Thank you, ma'am. 56 and 24. 56 and 24 are both divisible by 8. They're both divisible by 8. So we want to take that out, and then um, we've got n cubed and n squared, so 8n squared is our GCF there, 8n squared. 56 divided by 8 is 7, 7. n cubed divided by n squared is n, 24 divided by 8 is 3, and we took out the n squared. Now. When we move to the second pair, that 35 is negative. That 35 is negative. So we need to take out a negative 5 as our GCF. If the first term in your pair is negative, you need to take out a negative. Okay, so negative 35 divided by negative 5 is positive 7. We didn't do anything with the n. Negative 15 divided by negative 5 is positive 3. Notice if we hadn't have taken out that negative, both those terms would have been negative, and it would not have matched exactly with our first uh, linear factor. Okay? But these are exactly the same. Okay? I like to underline it to just remind myself to check it, make sure they are exactly the same. And then I can pair my GCFs together. I'm not going to write plus negative 5. I'm just going to write that as minus 5. Okay, adding a negative is the same as subtraction. And then I list my common linear factor once. 7n plus 3, that's it. It's not 7n plus 3 squared. I don't list it twice. Okay, that's it. I'm not going to take the time to foil that one out, but you could. Okay, two more. And then I'm going to let y'all practice with this because you did a little more involved. Okay. <clears throat> 9 in cubed and 12 in squared. They're both divisible by 3, and they both have at least n squared. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Take n squared out of n cubed. We got n. 12 divided by 3 is 4. It was positive 12, so it's positive 4. We took out the n squared. Another case where we've got that negative leading term, so that 15 and 20 have a GCF of 5, but it's negative, so it's negative 5. So we've got 3n plus 4. Negative 15 divided by negative 5 is positive 3. Negative 20 divided by negative 5 is positive 4. 3n plus 4, common linear factor, Pair my GCFs together, list my common linear factor once. That is the answer. Okay, last example. <clears throat> So all that leaves us with is 2x plus 9, because all we did was take out that variable. Negative 8x minus 36. 8 and 36, they're, both, they're not both divisible by 8. They're both divisible by 4, and it was negative, so that's a negative 4. When we took negative 8 divided by negative 4 is positive 2x. Negative 36 divided by negative 4 is positive 9. Common factor of 2x plus 9. 
So I put my GCFs together, x squared minus 4, with my common linear factor. Is there something else I could do to this problem? What's x squared minus 4? It's got a special name. Difference of perfect squares. I can factor this one a little bit further. Okay, x squared minus 4 factors into x plus 2 times x minus 2, and 2x plus 9 is, is factored as much as it'll go. So, you're probably not going to run into this very much, honestly. <clears throat> but every once in a while, and all the examples that are showing you up to this point, I didn't check, but I knew that they didn't. Um, when you get to this point, you need to check and make sure, does anything else factor further? x squared minus 4 is a difference of perfect square, so when it does factor further, I need to do that. Okay? Um, because again, the whole purpose of factoring is so that we can solve. The more we can factor, the easier the solving is going to be. If we can get something from being a quadratic and turn it into a linear equation, these linear equations are way easier to solve than quadratic equations are. Okay? Um, so we want, we want to check for that. Uh, before we say that we're done. Okay? So, let's practice with the grouping. 